Hello, friends. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats and Groovy Chicks. I'm your alter dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. And you know, the KH, he doesn't like me telling stories about him, but you know, back when he was 18, and you know, you can identify with this if you're 18 or you've been through that, you know. You know, when you're 18 and he was going to college, he had to get a summer job. Well, you know, your parents said, get a summer job. So he got a job at a place called Topsy's. It was a hamburger place. Well, he wasn't the person making the hamburgers. He was the person that was squirting the, you know, the uh, ketchup onto the hamburger and then plopping the, the pickle on it, on the top. You know, he's got, that was his job, an assembly line. The hamburgers went by and he went, you know, went by. That was the job. Anyway, it was during the time when the jazz festival was going on in Newport. And he had been playing in this uh, coffee house and he met this groovy chick. And he said, wow, I want to go to the jazz festival and take this groovy chick. So, you know, he asked her and she said, I'll go. And he said, well, I'll have to get permission from my parents and my boss. You know, well, he didn't ask his parents, you know, they would, they would have said no, of course. But he asked his boss thinking maybe he would say yes, but the boss said, no, you got to work, you, you got to work, you, you got a job here, you can't, you can't go. So what did he do? He quit his job, you know. That was defying against his parents and against his boss. You know, sometimes you have to make that kind of a decision in your life. You have to do the thing that is right for you. It may not be right for your parents or for the boss or for the people around you. It's, it's the thing you need to do to assert yourself for the person that you are, you know, and that changed his life because he went to that festival, he heard all those musicians, it inspired him to become the person that he is today, that's why he's here now, and forget about the girlfriend, she dumped him, but anyway, that's all right, you know, you don't care, anyway, that's the, oh, oh, he didn't want me to tell that story, here he's coming, he's got the guard dog, I got to split, bye bye, bye, I'll see you. Hello, cool cats and groovy chicks. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch. And I'm sorry about the alter dominant man. You know, he told that story, and it is true, but he lost his voice because he had a cold. But anyway, forgive him for that. But anyway, um, you know, it's a true story, and I guess the moral of it is be true to yourself. You know, regardless of how uh, other people tell you to be, or even your parents, you know, just do the thing that you think is right for yourself and your own growth. And I hope you will do that. And I hope I can inspire you to do that. And now uh, people have asked me to uh, talk about improvisation, particularly on the song Satin Doll by Duke Ellington. So here, here we go with a lesson on Satin Doll and how to improvise and some of my concepts on how to make your improvisation better. Here we go. <laughs>
Now let's pretend you're sitting in my living room here with me next to me at the piano and I'm demonstrating some things about improvisation to you that are important things that I've learned over the years that I think make improvisation better. And we'll just ad-lib this. There's no script and um, if I make a mistake I'll just keep going. Now of course when you're playing any song you want to learn the scales that go with the chords that you're playing, the chord progression. So it's D minor, G's up. That's pretty much Dorian there. And then on this one you can pretty much figure this one is uh, you can put that F sharp in there if you want to. Or you could use the F too and make it Phrygian. But if you use that then the E minor is relating to its relative minor of G. We're in the key of C so I mean you could use the F but now important thing is that you're using the scales as a means to an end but rather than just playing a bunch of notes that are based on the scale you're using those scales to find the notes that are the target tones and not are the passing tones so so there's target tones which are usually thought of as chord tones and then there's target tones and then there are notes that are thought of as passing tones to the target tone so this is a target tone, passing tone, target tone, passing tone, you know, so so a good melody is constructed of hitting those target tones in the right place. So I want to hit a target tone if I'm playing the one, two, three, four, like D minor seven, G seven. On the G seven I want to hit a target tone in the G chord. So I'm thinking of those notes. So I'm thinking of that note, that third, which is different than any of the notes that are in the uh, D minor in that it's a passing tone in D minor, but it becomes a target tone in G, so that's very important. So now what I did was I played figures, what I would call phrases. You want to play phrase shapes rather than just scales or just a bunch of notes. You want to play a phrase that is sort of like a phrase that you speak. In other words, you want to play a phrase. That is a distinctive thought. I'm not rambling on like this and saying, well, you want to play a phrase, but then you want to go beyond that and you want to do something else and you want to like put some uh, uh, altered chords in there or some altered notes and you want to play half steps and whole tones and this and that. I'm not creating a lot of things. I'm just saying something very simple like you want to play a phrase. You want to play a phrase, you know. In other words, you want to play phrase and they want to be shapes. They want to be things that have movement ascending, movement descending, movement horizontal, and movement vertical. So let's, let's break those down. Ascending, of course, is up the scale. Descending, of course, is down the scale. Ascending in steps is scalar. Ascending in in other words, that's horizontal. Vertical would be our skips. So you want to combine them. This is a combination of, a, of skips and scales. Ascending, skips, hitting a target tone, and then descending in a scale. Descending, ascending, horizontal, vertically, descending horizontally. So there you have it. See, so first thing I did was I played a lick and I worked this lick out ahead of time as an illustration of what I'm talking about. I played this. And then I repeated. So I'm repeating it. Now that is what I call a root-oriented progression. In other words, a root-oriented figure. It's, it's based on the root, and it has a numerical number to it. In other words, just like Satin Doll is this, is like five, it's the five of the D minor chord, to the four of the D minor. 
then it goes to a G chord, but that's the one of the G. And it does the same thing up a whole step. Now those are root oriented progressions, or root oriented figures, melodies. Like, so there's two things, there's the root oriented and then there's the sequence. Now a sequence could be just something like, it doesn't necessarily relate to the steps of the scale in terms of like, okay, this is five to one, and this is five to one, and this is five to one. They could relate in this way, it could be ba -da -ba -ba. and then it could go in other words, it's a figure that rhythmically and in such a way repeats the th same thought but on a different part of the scale. Not the same numerical figure as say one, three, five, seven. It might go to three, seven, you know, nine, eleven. So those two things when you use them in your solos will create more meaningful ideas and more listenable. For the listener they're hearing something that makes more sense than just a lot of notes or random notes are playing on scales. You know you can do all this kind of stuff. cares about that you know in other words play some melodic ideas you know so this is a melodic idea now I repeat it now what does that do it strengthens the idea in other words it's one step after the other in other words you're telling a story just like I said we went to the store what happened after that well we walked in we saw the grocer and he greeted us what happened after that well we asked him do you have any you know pine nuts and he said uh, no I don't have those you got to go to a specialty store in other words you're telling a story which is engaging your listener into the events of the story from one step to the next step another oh you say this okay the next thing that happens so now you get the idea of telling a story in other words one phrase can lead to the next now you don't want to do that to such an extent that you're just mimicking yourself all the time. You don't want like and then you know I did that a little bit in that solo just to illustrate the point but you want to mix it up. In other words if you do it too much then it sounds sing song -ish. it sounds pr too predicted and not interesting. So what you want to do is you want to maybe repeat a phrase and then maybe change it and then do something different mix it up. If you listen to Hor Horace Silver, he plays these little licks like he may play and then, and then he goes in other words he mixes it up. In other words he plays a couple of licks that really relate and then he comes up with a new idea and then he goes off from there. In other words he'll play something simple and then something more complex. So you want to mix it up with simple ideas and, and complex ideas. Now the other thing and the central point I want to make, this is really important for a lot of improvisers, the people that are studying improvisation or if you're a student or whatever, and that is the idea of completing the phrase. Now this is central, I mean you know, like you, you want to go off and, and do the, all these ideas. Well, you want to play phrases that end, in other words, that have a beginning and an end, like no. That ends, right? In other words, it ends somewhere. And um, when I listen to some younger players, they don't understand that idea that, that, that it's deliberate. In other words, you have, you have an intention to say, state something and have it come take you somewhere and then have a sense of completion. Now, you know, even if you're doing long ideas like somewhere it has to come to a place where it resolves itself. Maybe it's not till the very end, you know, the end of the eight bars. 
maybe you know there like you could go in other words it has to at some point you know and I think before that you want to resolve your phrases before eight eight measures um, it is important to come to some point where you're hitting a target tone on a strong beat and you get a sense of it ending like any sentence like I could like, just say sentences like we went to the store and when we bought bread and then we left and we said you know and was, I could just ramble on in which there's no periods you know you gotta have a period like when you tell a story you have to pl have a place where you pause <laughs> I realize I listen to some of my videos and I don't pause and so it's very hard for me to edit them because I I'd start the next sentence so so quickly but you know in uh, and I need to uh, do better with that I need to end my thought begin it and leave a space and 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 you know begin a new thought um, and the reason I try to do that is when I'm speaking is I'm I'm trying to move the video along I'm trying to you know, get the progress of the video and you may think of that way when you play but you really do need to come to some sort of point where you're ending a phrase like there you know you know there like that So it has, boom, hits a strong target tone on a place, on a strong beat, so you get a sense of an ending. And, um, well, that's one of the big, the big things, I think. Now, these rules that I'm telling you, or these suggestions, are just suggestions that I hope will help you to improve as a player. I don't want them to limit you because you certainly can break the rules in other words all the all rules are meant to be broken so you know you can use these ideas to your advantage to make your solos better but then you can break the rules and do the opposite and you know if you mix it up enough then your solo is going to be interesting if it's going to be just one way or the other then it's not going to be that good I don't think you know um, in my opinion, but that's just just my this is just my opinion. This is the what I like to hear in soloists. I like to hear this con these concepts. A couple other things, if you're a pianist or a guitarist, is that you can play chord type melodies. Like you know, I played this. Uh, that's mostly uh, locked hands technique. That's a locked hands technique and I have videos on that if you want to study that. That's another thing you can do as a pianist, but the other thing you can do is you can play melodies that are supported by chords like this. And that's like uh, Bill Evans thing in which you're playing the rhythm of the melody in the left hand, synchronizing it with it rather than just copying against it. like. Playing like in other words that's actually emphasizing the rhythm of your right hand melody and the other thing you can do is you can play octaves melodies and octaves like you know and you can play them also on octaves and also support it with maybe another harmony like this big sound so you have all these varieties of things you can do things in as a pianist there's so many things you can do that other players can't do you know I, probably closest thing would be guitarists can do this but you can even do these kind of things like in harmony you know you can do 
things like that. I mean, there's so many things you can do on a piano that it's, it's really amazing. And it's so much fun to try to do all these different kind of techniques. So give them a try. I hope I can inspire you. I want to take a minute to show you my book. This is the cover inside. You can see that it's designed to be in a three ring binder. So it's very practical. You can take pages out for easy photocopying. And so it has an advantage over most books for that reason. Plus it lies flat on the music stand. This is tilted because the music stand is tilted. But on chapter 26 in volume 2, Elements of Improvisation, these are advanced concepts. Now I also have beginner improvisation in, in volume 1. But this is in volume 2 and it covers elements like fr phrase, the mode of well-balanced melody, the accompanying harmony. They're all demonstrated in examples. The sentence, the sequence. Then you have horizontal movement, vertical movement, and here patterns and root-oriented progressions is what we covered in this particular this video. And then you have target tones and approach tones, and then other elements of improvisation. And also there's exercises in here and solos to learn. So this is very practical for beginners or any level, intermediate, advanced as well. So if you enjoy my videos, um, I'm sure you'll like my book and it will be a very good resource for you. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, please write to me. I love to hear from you. I always try to answer all my comments. You will see that, that I do that. And, um, you know, I have like over 100,000 subscribers now, so it's very difficult to keep up. So I'm glad that I have the time at this point in my life to uh, try to answer all my emails and all the people that write to me. And until next time, I will say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, the one and only, he's up there looking down at us with pity, as always, and he's saying, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.